Okay, I'm here on the first page of notes 18. It's page 241. I'm here for like one second and then I'm gonna switch over to GeoGebra. I just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page, like literally. Um, so these notes are gonna be about uh, approximating areas and volumes by using something called partitioning. And so uh, the basic idea, as I've always kind of like thought about it, although there's a better way of thinking about it now, maybe depending on what you watch on TV, um, or streaming or whatever, is as you increase the levels in a ziggurat, so that's like a Mesoamerican type of pyramid, was very common, has like, it looks like a cake with lots of layers. Um, its shape tends toward a pyramid. So if you look at this picture, oh, that is like way too small. Let me, let me bump that up. How are we feeling about, that's pretty good, I think. Let me try, let me just try one more, just in case. Is this what I want? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back, go back one. This is good, you should always plan ahead um, so that you're like ready to do things. All right, if we look at this picture, as we increase the number of layers, like if I went through this picture and I divided again, so like say, what are we even doing here? Uh, if I divided it here and then here, I'm not doing a good job, but if I made more layers, then it would get more and more accurate. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to GeoGebra and show you a couple of ideas, right? And then we'll come back here and we'll like do some notes. So I apologize for the shaky start to these notes, but let's, uh, let's do that. So we're gonna switch over to GeoGebra and here, we have sort of my, uh, my rough start on making a ziggurat, and then I'm gonna turn that into a pyramid, but the way I'm basically gonna do it is I'm just gonna keep increasing the number of layers. So this is the laziest thing you could do, right? So I tell you, build me a pyramid, and you come back with this. It's one solid block, has a height of five. Key thing is the height of five, like we want it to have a height of five. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna increase the, uh, apparently I can't just arrow over. So if I increase it to two, right? Still has a height of five, but now you're starting to see something, right? So, and you can kind of get the sense that if we go to three, it looks a little better. At four, you start getting this idea like, okay, that's a ziggurat. If I kept going, it would start to look more and more like a pyramid always using the same height. The height is five, that's constant. So we're up to 28 layers. Let's go to 50 layers. Here's 50 layers, almost indistinguishable from a pyramid. So if I wanted to approximate the volume of this pyramid, all I would need to do is find the volume of each of those layers. But what are each of those layers? Each of those is just a rectangular prism. And that's pretty basic to find the area, the volume of, I should say. I don't know if I'm saying volume all the way through this, who knows. Um, so if I could sort of generalize the process, then I could use as many as I wanted, right? Like here I'm using three. Uh, when I went up to 50, I was using 50, obviously. What we wanna do is acknowledge that if this is our approximation of a pyramid, this is not a good approximation. This is better. This is still better this is better. If we could go to infinity, have an infinite number of slices, we would actually get the exact value of the volume of this pyramid. And that's kind of where we're headed with these notes. So that's the first idea, is that we can take a shape, slice it up into easier to deal with shapes, and add up all of their volumes, and it'll give us the total volume or an approximation, I should say. If we had an infinite number, we'd get the exact value. And that is nuts. That's like the basis of calculus. Um, a second idea that we want to deal with is if we take this rectangle, right? So it's a rectangle in the xy plane. Uh, it goes from 0 to 2 for x, 0 to 3 for y. If I rotate this around the x-axis, in your mind, think what shape are you going to get? So if you did the problems that were at the end of the last set of notes, you know that you're going to get a cylinder. So let's just see that happen. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate. So I'm, it's, it's linked to theta. And you can see as it rotates, 
it starts to form a cylinder. Now this is gonna be useful because what we're gonna really do is we're gonna take a lot of things and rotate them around the x-axis. And when we do that, you're always gonna get these cylindrical, well, circular cross sections. And we can approximate the volume by making cylinders and just find the volume of the cylinders. So that's a big idea. And let's see that in action before we like jump in and actually do some problems. So here, uh, I'm gonna make one rectangle. I'm gonna try, there's one rectangle. I take that rectangle, I rotate it around the axis. And what I'm claiming is that I'm approximating the volume or the solid that I get when I rotate this curve. So really it's just this lower little part. So one of anything is probably gonna be a bad approximation. We can rotate this and you can see like, yeah, that's a terrible approximation. But what if we use two? Honestly, until you use a lot, it's still a bad approximation. Um, but you can see that every time I add a layer, so I'm adding more rectangles, I get less wrong. And so ultimately I'd like to add an infinite number of rectangles because then I will not be wrong at all. And you can see it's kind of filling in. You got a lot of rectangles there. So we don't want to, we want to come up with a generalization. We don't want to have to deal with each individual one. This is so much that it's hard to rotate it. But if I rotate this, you can basically see the shape. And then if you did the last set of notes, you can actually come up with an equation for this surface. Um, and so I did that and it's here. So let me click that. Let me turn off some things, turn this off. This is the solid that we're going to approximate the volume of. The way we're going to approximate the volume is we're going to make a bunch of cylinders. So you'll be told how many cylinders to use. So in the XY plane, it looks like you're making rectangles, but you're actually taking the rectangle and rotating it. So for this rectangle, the radius of the cylinder that you get is three. The height of the cylinder is, it looks like one half because we are making six rectangles and you go from zero to three. So three minus zero is three. That's the distance along the X axis. Divide by six, you get one half. So each is one half high. And the radius is always just the right end point of this interval, right? So you go from zero to 0.5, find the height of 0.5. 0.5 to one, find the height at one. The height is the radius, I should say. Um, you go from one to 1.5, find the radius at 1 1.5, 1.5 to two, and you just keep going. So that's what we're interested in doing. And what I'm gonna do is cut this video here and come back and do a bunch of things in the notes that are a little more concrete. So we'll get numerical values and things like that. But I will be back very quickly with another video on that. So I hope this is uh, kind of helpful.